Hello everyone! As we're currently waiting for the 70th episode to get released, where G-Man is most likely to appear soon, I'd like to review him as the whole character because this guy has definitely had his ups and downs lately. Is G-Man still going to be one of the most important figures for Skibidi Army? Or is someone else about to take the reins? Where is human G-Man now? And does the original G-Man exist in the first place or not? I'm going to answer all these questions and tell you even more in this video, so grab your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch it to the end, because it'll be awesome! Let's go! Considering that G-Man is one of the most complicated characters in the whole series, I'm going to part this video into several sections, so it would be easier for you to follow my thoughts. Today, I'm going to tell you the whole story of his character, remind you of his best highlights, and predict what will about to happen to him in the next episode. The very first time we see G-Man in Da Fuk's series doesn't happening with his toilet form that we know very well now. At first he appears to be in his originally human form. Da Fuk created G-Man as a reference to the character with the same name from Half-Life series, using the same face and body models, because it all was intended to be a joke in the beginning. But as the series progressed, the connections with G-Man from Half-Life became more important and relevant to Skibidi Universe's lore but I'll tell you about it with more detail a bit later. We could see the human G-Man in the very first episode of Skibidi series, although it lasted just for a split second. It appeared in episode two alongside with Gordon Freeman, another funny reference without any extra weight. Then in episode three, we can see him getting crushed by the big toilet as he was in his way. Despite that, we could see him again in episodes four, five, and six. And now his model looked less goofy, as if it was another person. His appearance in Episode 4 was the most suspicious of all. He looked quite concentrated, and it seemed like he was connected with this whole Skibidi invasion event. At the start of this series, it was too early for us to make any serious assumptions about him, but now I can see the logic of his future character. So, there's one significant detail about Half-Life G-Man. It was stated in the lore of those games that he's able to clone himself and be present in multiple places all at once. That explains human G-Man's second re-emergence after Episode 3, because he had different clones in the beginning of the series already. The role that human G-Man played for the plot of Skibidi Universe still remains to be a bit unclear. It seems to me that the human version of G-Man was more decorative and added for fun, because we know that the actual lore started from Episode 7, and Episode 7 was that exact episode when the original G-Toilet appeared for the first time, which is no coincidence but I still think that the human G-Man had already given us the first hints about his ability to create clones, and I will tell you everything about it. But before that, let me discuss another important thing. The original G-Toilet from Episode 7. With Episode 7, we get our first actual interaction with Skibidi Toilets, and also take a glimpse at the epic emergence of the original G-Toilet that comes out from an explosion full of fury. For now, the only thing that distinguishes him from the ordinary Skibidi toilets in his size. Although G-Man was not the first big toilet we saw in the series. Remember this guy from Episode 3, which was the one who crushed the human G-Man, by the way? Or take a look on those Skibidi in Episode 4. We have the ordinary Skibidi, a large one and a bunch of tiny ones, which gives me an idea that Skibidi can be different in sizes. And remember this size talk, guys, because we will be back to it a little bit later. Next time, we see the earlier version of G-Toilet in Episode 12. And this time, he's equipped with the lasers that he's able to shoot from his eyes. Due to this ability and his size, he could have been considered the most dangerous Skibidi Toilet in the earlier seasons, and no one could be a fair opponent to him. Another remarkable thing about him was the impossibility to flush him as the other Skibidi Toilets, even the big ones. That made him stood out even more. And that's where the talk about him being some sort of military leader for Skibidi Army started from. It was later confirmed by Episode 17, when G-Man was obviously in the position of authority for other Skibidi surrounding him. This episode also shows how incredibly robust he is, as G-Man was able to survive the powerful beam's exposition without even taking a slightest amount of damage. There's one interesting detail about the flushing, though. In Episode 22, it seemed like when he was tried to be forcefully flushed, he resisted it with great force, and that's why he turned out to be okay. And compare this with the scene where Titan Speaker Man tried to flush G-Man in Episode 65, it simply didn't work. So, I think his non-flushable characteristics had been severely upgraded. 
But the reputation of G-Man being the unbeatable enemy for everyone has changed with episode 20, where he encountered with Titan Cameraman for the first time. Now it was the battle between two gigantic creatures, and I think it was the first time for G-Man in the series when he felt the actual threat for his well-being. Despite the fact that Titan Cameraman's core was damaged in the process, and he had to leave the fight in the middle, we still saw his ability to counter G-Man's lasers with his shield and his great physical strength. After episode 22, we didn't see the original G-Toilet for a while, but everything changes with the parasite infection of Titan Speaker Man in episode 32. Since episode 33, G-Man starts appearing with his new ally on the regular basis, and I have certain thoughts on this matter. I think that with the emergence of Titan Cameraman as the first powerful ally that the Alliance got, G-Man, who was playing a role of a Skibidi military leader, realized that he needed the future upgrades as well. Not only that, I think he also got an idea of empowering Skibidi army forces as well. So his character played quite an important role for the war aspect of the series. And besides this, the most important thing happened. Having learnt that the Alliance's soldiers got to be more dangerous and powerful in battle, the original G-Man started leaning more into the shadows. And I'm pretty much sure that episode 35 was the last time we saw him, and not his clones, because he still had his old toilet tank there, and no changes could be noticed on his face. I have an idea that the original G-Man saw the potential of the anti-parasite cannon that was saved from the Alliance's lab, and two outcomes happened due to this. Firstly, G-Man realized that the infected Titan Speakerman needed some kind of backup in case this cannon would be developed good enough to actually cure him from the parasite that controls his body. And considering how powerful of an ally infected Speakerman was, G-Man started thinking of an idea of using different clones at this point to protect him. And secondly, the clone thing was the best way to secure the original G-Man as well, because things seemed about to get more heated. So, in episode 38, we see the first certified clone that I will be referring to as G-Man 38, because I'll discuss multiple G clones in this video, and it would be easier to mark them so you wouldn't get too confused. So, in this episode, G-Man appears by protecting the infected Titan Speaker Man from the anti-parasite gun shot released by Big Scientist Cameraman, which immediately proves that he's the clone and not the original guy because the actual G-Man wouldn't be so bold risking his life in order to take a hit for another ally, considering the weight he has in Skibidi Army. Also, we can see how different he is now from the earlier version in terms of upgrades. He is now able to fly using the jetpacks. He has thick armor plates on his chest and on the sides that allow him enduring tons of damage. And he's also got two laser guns in addition to his eye lasers. Also, another thing that proves that this G-Toilet is a clone is his toilet tank. It seems like he now has a stand under his toilet, although before that he didn't have anything like this, which in reality is another toilet but turned upside down. And we already know by now that its purpose is to give room to hide the actual Puppet Master inside of the large G-Clone's body. We could clearly see the process of pulling an actual Skibidi Puppet Master in Episode 65, for example. Combined with the power of the infected Titan Speakerman, the emergence of a greatly upgraded G-Man's clone couldn't be left unnoticed. So, just an episode later, another powerful confederate come to help the Alliance in order to balance the odds. And it was no other than TV Men's Race. So I can say that G-Man pushed the plot of the series further, and it didn't stop just here. Very soon after TV Men's appearance, another Titan steps into the game in episode 41, and it's Titan TV Man, who remains to be the most dangerous enemy to the Skibidi army up to this day. And to encounter such an enemy, G-Man needed another clone made for the combat purposes specifically. So in episode 47, when Titan TV Man got led into the trap by the infected Titan Speakerman, he was approached by another G-Clone, which I'll be calling G-Man 47. And if you guys think that it's the same G-Clone from episode 38, you are in the wrong here. Because take a closer comparison look at those two guys. G-Man 38 is a clone which main purpose is to protect other significant allies of Skibidi Army. That's why the main focus of his upgrades was on his protection chest and side plates and not his weapons. Two laser guns. G-Man 38 had looked small and weak in comparison with the ones G-Man 47 has now. Besides that, 
G-Man 38 is probably the smallest clone of all, while G-Man 47 is much larger and more intimidating. Also, two of his laser guns are upgraded more, and he has a double toilet. So, G-Man 47 is a combative clone, and his main goal is to confront Titan TV Man and other members of the Alliance. But his current upgrades were still not enough to successfully do so, and he could have easily gotten fried by TV Man's red glow if it wasn't for Titan Speakerman attacking him from the back. We can see how badly injured G-Man 47 was, and his eye lasers were probably out of use because of that glow influence. That's why in episode 49 we can see the same guy, but with the yellow protective sunglasses on. Apparently he still wasn't able to use his eye lasers, because his face was ruined so badly by Titan TV Man. In the second part of episode 57, we can see G-Man 47 once again, and this time he's being upgraded even further with protective earphones and more laser guns. In episode 60, we see another G clone which lots of people often confused with G-Man 47, although those are different guys as well. This guy looks suspiciously weaker in comparison with G-Man 47. He has four lasers, but it's just the imitation of powerful upgrades, because all four are quite small and weak, and wouldn't be able to pull this G clone off in the serious battle. Also, his toilet rim is visibly smaller, and this clone has laser eyes, unlike G-Man 47. But why would G-Man need such a weak clone, you can ask? The answer's simple. The Alliance didn't know that G-Man had different clones till episode 65, because Skibidi kept it in secret. Their goal was to lure the best Alliance's forces, which are our favorite trio of Titans, to the trap. And that's why clones was used one by one for different reasons. This clone's purpose was to become a decoy for the Titans and to create an impression that he is an actual G-Man betrayed by his allies, so the Alliance would be misinformed. And the trick almost worked, because Titans were almost caught off guard by Kamikaze Skibidi, and the Alliance also expected another turn of events in the future since now. After episode 65, it wasn't necessary for Skibidi Army to keep a secret about G-Man's clones. So we met three of them at once in the fourth part of episode 67. All of them seem to be of a combative type of clones, but they are not particularly complicated in their design. They don't have double toilets, but the ordinary ones with the wide cistern. Besides, considering the amount of power upgraded Titan TV Man held in that episode, their lasers, rockets, and saws didn't help them much against him. But it's fine, actually, because who's actually important here is the G-Clone from the third part of Episode 67, the one who left in panic at the start of Titan TV Man's arrival. This guy is the most interesting one among all G-Man clones. I told you before that there are different specific types of G-Man clones, but this guy seems to be an ace combining everything in one. He's got plenty of armor, but he's also literally stuffed with laser guns, so it wouldn't be a problem for him to both attack and get defensive. And there's my theory I have about this guy. In my analysis of episode 67, I said that this G-Man could probably be the original one based on how rapid he fled the fight with the obviously dangerous enemy. But now, based on what I saw in the secret tablet scene added by Dafuk in the compilation video of both parts of episode 69, I have something else on my mind. In that scene, I saw G-Man 67 being in the process of the possible upgrade for Episode 70, when the final battle is about to occur between Skibidi and the Alliance forces. And in the background, I saw a small Skibidi toilet that was suspiciously highlighted just for a moment. And I thought, what if it was the actual original G-Man right there? Similar in looks to the original Skibidi scientist we saw in the end of Episode 67? Which means that G-Man 67 is another clone as well, who's been either controlled by the original G-Man or by some random Skibidi. But the clone itself was so heavily upgraded that it would be foolish to get him destroyed by Titan TV Man. And now this clone is being prepared for one final encounter we're about to see really soon. Also, I am pretty much sure that this clone may actually be G-Man 47 based on his ruined face and the glasses that he's wearing. This time they are black though and I think he intended to protect himself from Titan TV Man's painful glow this time with these. But still, whoever controlled him from the inside decided not to risk this costly clone at all, but to save it for the final battle and on another landscape. And as we can see from the secret tablet scene added by Dafuk, this clone is also being upgraded as well. And then, one final question remains, and it's about the original G-Man's size. 
Because if we'll take the idea that the original G-Man is as small as Skibidi Scientist, then how could I explain the size of the original G-Toilet in the beginning of the series? And I have a theory on this. It goes like this. What if the original G-Toilet was also a clone, one of the first one ever, and it's been controlled by the original G-Man from the inside? That would explain the size issue. And also, what if G-Man possesses an ability to transplant himself from one clone to another, unlike the ordinary Skibidi that are being trained to control only one puppet? Because if we remember the human G-Man, who was inspired by Half-Life G-Man, and about his possible hidden ability to appear in multiple places using different clones, it would actually fit into my theory. And that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons under this video. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya.